where we met upon the bank side of a comely lagoon under a blanket of stars and the dark side of the moon and she was sat picking petals of a summer poppy's bloom and wound round her wrist and pink thread was a balloon and I asked her what the balloon celebrated and she said that it flew to mourn this land this land which had been turned barren by the eternal greed of man she spoke of susurrus snakes being ripped from happy homes to make way for a concrete jungle built on nature's bones you know how sad it is that we destroy perfection to make way for avarice and this she spoke with her silver-tongued rhetoric as I sat longingly and listened. I mean, she'd christened my mind with newfangled ideas and philosophies discussing life and life's lessons, professions and their novelties. And she told me she wished to be a teacher. A moulder of minds for education was the key. And I said, well, teacher, you've turned my pupils into pupils and taught them better things to see. And for hours we sat and spoke, smoking woodbines under the night's cloak, all the while my heart refusing to dead its dance. Her Chantorian's eyes had me entranced with little flecks of gold and green that sparkled with jubilant behaviour under the night's pale glow. And in a thoughtless act of passion, I grabbed her wrist and then grabbed the balloon thread and with teeth bared, I bit through and released that balloon that we'd shared. And she cried out and screamed, what have you done? And I just cried back, my dear, now our words float by the sun. You know, these ideas that we've shared now rise high towards the heavens. So the gods may hear our pleas and rid the world of its seven sins that do plague and take away our lands. You know, they glamorize the twisted villain and idolize the crooked man. This balloon that now flies doesn't mourn but will rise as a beacon of hope for all the folks that cry at night. And she silently smiled and nodded. But, you know, through searching eyes, I could see her pupils following that balloon up and up. On through wondrous heights and on towards the unknown. And so I took a face in between my hands, kind of like this. And I said that moments like this belong to you and me. And that's he and she, lost in each other's gaze for an eternity. And this eternity I'll spend eternally by your perfectly formed form. And it's no courtesy, for I feel blessed to be in the warmth of our certainty. And here quite nervously, but perfectly purposefully, I'll say I love you. And I think that's fucking incredible, you know, to have this being in front of you who could bring you all down to naught but then at the same time build you up as if through her hands you were wrought. You're caught within her smile, so kind she is taught. She feeds my mind with her knowledge. Now ain't that food for thought? Now all that I speak is uttered through these lips of purpose. Yes, these lips of lust, the lips with urges, and these lips wish to lips your lips and kiss the lips which I worship. No nervous slips, just these wordless trips through the circuits of your imagination as we interlock fingertips. And now I want to make you smile. So I'm desperately searching the floor for any rare form of beauty to pick up and give to you as a sign of my love. And I come across a bouquet of forget-me-nots. And as I pass them to you, I whisper, forget-me-not. For people in this life tend to forget me a lot. But I don't forget what I love and I like and like these forget-me-nots, darling. Don't forget me tonight. Because this love is you and me. And that's he and she lost in each other's brilliance for the whole world to see. <laughs> what was? Oh, so he does.